Most of the time when people, when I meet new people and they ask me what do I do, I kind of like, you know, I'm quite happy being a graphic designer. So it's always like with a bit of a smug, happy feeling that I say like, yes, I'm a graphic designer. And most people think like, oh, yes, you have to work in like these really swish design offices. But um, actually for like the last 15, 16 years that I've been doing this, um, most of the time, I've never really seen the inside of an office like that. Most of the places where I've worked, it's usually like just a couple of cardboard boxes, makeshift IKEA desks and whatever. And um, even so, most of the time is spent in my home office. Uh, it's a spare room that I've converted. Um, it's got all my stuff. All the, I, I, quite, I quite like working at home, actually, because... You know, there's, it, it's a whole different dynamic. I'm, 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 most of the time I'm working on my own, just with like a, a couple of cats around. So that's kind of like my day-to-day -day world for like probably the last eight years out of, those, out of those 15, 16 years. So when the next question people usually ask is, so what do you design then? So people always have like a couple of um, ideas like, oh, you must do logos, or do you do advertisement, do you do brochures? And I kind of, say, well, I kind of do, I design everything. I, I'm, I, there's no real um, like spot that, you, that I can pinpoint myself. And my wife usually, when she introduces me, she's like, hey, Tom does websites. I'm like, no, I just don't do websites. I do books as well and stuff. Um, so I usually go like, well, what do you design? I say, well, I design everything, which usually people react like that because they don't really get that, like, how, how does that work? And it's because people like labeling, like, like labeling you, and especially in design, um, you know, people want to know what you do. Is it like, are you a web designer, a print designer? Do you do logos? Um, what kind of industry do you primarily work in? Do you work in music? Do you do like technology? Uh, do you work with tech companies? And then it kind of even can be filtered down even more into style. Are you like, you know, are you like a modernist designer? Do you just do like everything is Swiss, everything is Helvetica? Or do you kind of feel like, you know, are you an app designer that really kind of paints little wooden icons for, uh, for your iPhone? So how I define myself as a, as a designer starts going all the way back to when I, when I was growing up. Um, that's me and my dad. Uh, he was an interior designer and a, and a furniture designer. And he was, a, um, he was a, a college professor. So from a very young age, I was kind of exposed to that whole, like, you know, the um, art college um, feel. Um, both my parents were interior designers, actually. So sometimes when I was like five, six years old, my dad would drag me down, uh, drag me to um, his college. And I kind of wander around, see students, see what they were doing, see what my dad was doing. And that whole industry and that whole atmosphere of design started to like influence me from a very young age and this is some stuff that my dad used to design um, back in the in the 70s so he would design for example that fireplace and like design design the interiors he would do do um, you know furniture like this is all very 70s as you can see like lots of fur um, you know stereo equipment like really big like furniture units that you could put in, put in your home. And so I kind of grew up in, in that kind of environment with, with like my dad was quite, quite a modernist designer. Like um, st he studied in the, in, in the 60s, started working in the, in the late 60s, early 70s. So that kind of a, was really what was all about, like what was in my home. But at the same time, seeing all this stuff, I, I um, I was really into comics and, and, and sci-fi. My dad was a really big sci-fi fan. So he, he, like, you know, when I was a kid, we were watching, like, Space Odyssey, which I completely didn't get. And, like, um, you know, sci-fi movies. Uh, I started watching cartoons, started, discovered comics. And so I'm, I'm kind of, like, this whole mix of, of, of really modern design um, and, 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 and sci-fi films, comic books, uh, Japanese animation, that kind of, for, for like most of my teen teenage years was, you know, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, I, I was growing up thinking I'm gonna be a comic book artist, I'm gonna do all this stuff. So, 1994, I enroll uh, in uh, the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in, in Antwerp um, as a graphic design student. And I start doing wonderful stuff like this, just discovering Photoshop, like, oh shit, I can do things black and white and color at the same time. Um, but I'm doing, I'm doing these like 
what I thought back then were quite boring um, um, design assignments. And in my spare time, I started drawing comics, and I was kind of thinking, like, okay, I'll use all my design stuff I learned in school, and I'll do, I'll make comic books with it. And every project that I did in high, in, in college, I kind of wanted to like inject it with everything that I saw in, in sci-fi films. What, you know, I saw like, would they have like all this weird equipment? So I'll do like, oh shit, I read something about DVDs. I'll just do an ad campaign about like portable DVD players and um, kind of draw stuff and, and, and be all comic booky. Um, this was my graduation project in 1998 where I thought like, okay, I'm gonna, my, my tutors really wanted, to, wanted me to kind of do something quite classical like that they could understand. Like you do a, public, a publisher identity or you do something that's like, that has a social um, component to it. So I said, okay, I'll do, I'll do your book publisher, but I'll do it for science fiction books, and I'll do like some comic book illustration and mash it up with design. Um, and my two, this is actually, those were my teachers. That's not like some zany Google picture. And they were kind of, they, they kind of saw what I wanted to do, but they didn't really get it. Um, but I managed to graduate, and then, so 19, June 1998, I'm like, yes, I'm a graphic designer. I can make cards and say I'm a graphic designer. So just pure luck lands me a job at a local um, new media agency. Because I kind of, when I, when I graduated, um, I wanted to, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do because all my teachers, they were, they were either working at small desktop publishing um, companies doing brochures, annual reports, that kind of stuff. And I was completely not into that. And I didn't really know what to do. So we had a guest lecturer who had studied at my school, who had studied maybe 10, 15 years prior. And he had moved to, um, he had moved to the States early 90s, just caught up with like the start of the internet industry, uh, 3D graphics and everything. And he kind of, when I saw him talk, it kind of clicked for me and I said, okay, I'm going to do like websites, I'm going to do digital design, new media as it was called then. So I landed a job at an agency doing, again, not really what I wanted to do when I was graduating, thinking I'm going to do like, I'm going to revolutionize the world, I'm going to do like all these cool 3D landscapes and uh, kind of comic booky sci-fi stuff. And I ended up doing quite very corporate work for actually really major brands. So fresh out of college, I'm immediately working for like global companies like Ricoh, uh, Yashica Cameras, Honeywell, uh, Johnson & Johnson, doing like their websites. And I'm learning the first two years, I, uh, the, 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 I worked there for two years straight out of college. And it was in that, that company that I really learned more than like, you know, how to design like how to be a designer, I learned a lot of technical um, technical stuff. I learned how to work in Flash. I used the I, uh, I learned how to use Director. Used to, uh, like how to write HTML. Uh, kind of d learn how to design websites basically. And at the same time, like at work, I would learn like okay, this is how you use a 3D program and like how you work with type and everything. I start kind of playing around in my spare time and using all the stuff I learned at, at work start doing basic 3D, uh, I start, I'm finally, I only got online in 1998, 99, because I had an internet connection at work. So I start discovering, like, I start discovering Dylan's work, I start discovering Designers Republic, Epic, and all those, all the agencies here, here in the UK and in the States. And I kind of feel, I don't, I didn't really see anything that was doing that back in Belgium. So I really wanted to like get into that that side of the industry, and I wanted I, I, I wanted to do what those guys were doing. So in June 2000, by again kind of pure luck, um, I land a job at an American company that was opening a, a, a London office called Virtual Studios. Um, the interesting thing about this company for me was that they were. They didn't have any commercial work on their website. They seemed to be really big. They were kind of uh, part of a really big American media conglomerate that had, um, I think Michael Bay is on the board of directors. They have Matt Greening from The Simpsons. Um, he's, he's one of the like big directors there. They, do, they have a whole um, um, division that does video games as well. 
but this virtual was pure web design. And I noticed that all the guys, uh, individual designers that I was quite admiring back then around that time, they were all working at that agency. But the step to go to the States for me back then was just a bit too far because I didn't feel I had like enough, enough know-how and enough baggage to like go all the way there and, and kind of make it. So when they opened a uh, shop in, in, in the UK, they, were looking, they said they were looking for a Dutch-speaking designer, so that was kind of like my way in. Um, I'm going to show you a little video now. This was kind of one of their sizzle reels, what they were doing back in, um, I guess, 1999, uh, early 2000s. I hope it loads. So when I saw that, I was completely blown away and I was real okay, this is, this is the stuff I want to do, but I can't find any place in Belgium to do it. So luckily, I go for a job interview here in London and, I, and me and my best friend actually, he went the, the day after, but then eventually I got the job. So I moved here, uh, started working, that's me there at the big IMAX Max screen. Um, and it was, it was, for me, it was really an eye-opener because up to that point, I was, uh, when I was working in Belgium, I was quite happy doing like my nine to five kind of design job. Go home and then just play around in, in Photoshop and then just like hit the pub. Um, and, and I kind of, yeah, I, w I was happy, but I wasn't really that driven like, you know, to, to, to really make things for myself. Um, and when I joined, when I joined, vir joined virtual, like all the guys I was working uh, with, the guys sitting there, they were all, they all had their own personal websites. And one of the first questions they asked when I joined them was like, so what's your URL? And like, um, uh, don't have a site. And they were like, what? No, everyone has a site. You need to have a site. Because the guy sitting next to me with his back to, to, to us, uh, that's James Whitegren. He used to run a design portal called 3o.com. Um, now he uh, runs uh, Your Majesty uh, ad agency, digital ad agency in, in New York. And you had guys uh, like Mike Young, who used to run Design Graphic, now owns, uh, we work for them, like the, the, the font distributor and everything. You had G-Monk, uh, video, video designer. Um, and all these guys were all like in the same building and they were basically working all the time. We do our client jobs from 10 till 6, and then from 6 till midnight, 1, 2 a.m., we all just like jam on our personal sites. So I kind of really got into that workflow of just, you know, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be limited by just your client work. You just make stuff, do anything that you want. So I start like, I, I keep developing like, you know, ideas like, oh, I'm going to do like floating robots and like the 3D and, and, and the graphic overlays. And I eventually launch my own website, which was kind of uh, an abstract ex exploration. I had a glitch in, in Flash. I had like made this really nice Photoshop image and I imported it in Flash and I did something wrong and it kind of broke apart in shards. So I started exploring like kind of more abstracty things. And I, and I kind of got rid of, of like trying to make objects and be a bit literal. So I start doing, doing more of this kind of, like slowly, slowly, I start to, 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 to develop my own design language, as it were. So after a year, I can kind of say like, okay, now I'm a digital designer. I've, I've graduated as a graphic designer, but now I'm doing all this computer stuff all the time, so now I'm a digital designer. And I leave uh, virtual just as the, 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 design, the, the, the digital industry implodes in, in like 2001, loads of, the uh, digital design agencies go under. Um, I get laid off as well. And I start to kind of like, with everything I have, I, I've learned at that point, I start to um, like, you know, 
luckily, I, I, I started to, to find a couple of freelance clients. And um, I'll come back to, to this, uh, this guy. That, that was like my first freelance job I did when I, when I was here in London for uh, a comic book artist called Ashley Wood. Um, I'll, but I'll come back to him later. But at, in the meantime, so I'm, I'm basically for, I think, a year, a year and a half, I'm, I don't have any job. I'm just sitting at home, just making stuff, updating my site like every other month, just emailing all the design websites, just to like keep my profile out there. And I start doing um, Im digital images, abstract images for um, um, image stock providers. That kind of keeps me afloat through like that year. Um, and in the meantime, I keep sending, I think, like hundreds of emails. I, I really start to like looking at, at every digital like web agency that I think did cool stuff that will hire me because I'm, I'm just looking at my bank account and I'm thinking I need to, I, I, can't, I don't really want to go back to Belgium. So in March 2002, after a lot of um, uh, emails, I land uh, a job at a small web boutique called Kleber Design. Uh, Kleber was started in 1997-98 and is really well known for their stuff in the music industry. Um, we've worked, we primarily uh, worked with, we kind of made our name working for, for uh, independent uh, record labels like uh, Ninja Tune. Uh, we did the Warp Records website for years and years and years. Uh, we had a really close working relationship with uh, the designers of Public. So we, we, used to, we used to do all their websites. We helped them out on music videos. Um, we did uh, bleep.com uh, when it launched in 2004, I think. Contrary to what a lot of people think, that site was like quite a, a, a first for like independent, because this was just right after iTunes launched and started to gain traction and people went like the whole music industry went, oh, shit, we need to sell MP3s. And Bleep was developed by basically two guys not sleeping for four or five months, developing like it, everything, everything on that site was bespoke and it was like quite a big, uh, it made an impact in, 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 in like, you know, in the record, the, the record music industry landscape. So I wasn't, I, I didn't work on that particular project, but when I started, I was kind of pushed into the deep end immediately and I, for, I, worked at Kleber for um, a little over eight years. And um, f basically from the start, I started, um, I made websites for MTV, um, a lot of Ninja Tune artists, um, Kid Koala, I did Sigur Rós website, Hextatic. Uh, we also started doing stuff for the culture industry. So we worked with the ICA, um, did um, sites for like, you know, kind of straddling the, 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 the line between doing really cool independent and kind of, you know, free for all um, designs for, for like, you know, an artist like Kid Koala or Hextatic you kind of play with to like more mainstream stuff like, you know, Kylie Minogue or like Lily Allen. Um, and it's, 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 it was a really interesting balance to, to kind of do these things, like do really free form cool stuff versus like the commercial, more mainstream work. But, you know, it's all kind of within the same environment and in the same industry. So I'm doing, I'm doing this and really, really enjoying, enjoying the work during those eight years. Um, but on the side, I'm still, I still have that kind of burning feeling that I just don't want to do this and, you know, nine till five or whatever, and then go home. Um, so while I'm doing my, my day job at, at, at Kleber, I'm still kind of, you know, into, I'm still into comics and everything. And I keep kind of working with Ashley throughout, those, throughout that time. Um, his first website was kind of done as, as, as a one-off. But then we started, like, you know, the one-off thing started to grow and we kept talking and one website became the next iteration became another website and so on. So I start like outside of uh, my, my Kleber work, I start to build a body of, of work that's kind of running parallel to it, but it's not really like the exact same um, industry. Um, so around in 2003, after a year or two years at, um, uh, at Kleber, I decide like, okay, 
I'm doing, people, people know I'm, I'm working at Kleber. They also know I've got like all this other stuff going on. So I'll just, I, wanna, I wanted to put my name basically to, to the work I was doing outside. And I created um, hellomuller.com, my, my separate portfolio website. And on that side, I could kind of show this is all my Kleber work. This is all the stuff I do outside, like all the comic book stuff, all logos and identities that I did. And on that first website, I have to describe myself, so I just kind of go like, well, I'm a graphic designer and I do this and this and this and this and this and this. And it, 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 it was quite clunky, a, a very clunky way to kind of describe my work and, and, and what I do. And while, while that site is up and running and I'm doing, I'm working at Claver, I keep, you know, the, the work with Ashley starts to evolve into, from not just doing a website, I start working on his books, I start designing, um, covers, logos, we work on, on video game branding. Um, I start working on his, on, on logos for his toy lines. Um, and so it's all a very organic process. I'm doing my work, my day job really, at Kleber, come home, do this, do this stuff. And for one thing leads to, to another. And in around 2004, I start, um, I become partner in uh, a, a small UK comic book and graphic novel publisher. And that, that's how I basically met, met Richard. Um, and that gives me another opportunity to kind of like stretch myself a bit further. I start kind of art directing all the books. I just, I do the cover designs, layouts, uh, interior pages, and it really gives me the opportunity to, you know, I'm doing all the web stuff, and it kind of starts to inform, you know, I can take bits and pieces from, from my digital work, infuse it into my, my print work, and vice versa. So it kind of becomes, it slowly starts to blur, and I start to, you know, things like I, I used to do a couple of years ago, I start to revisit and like fine tune, like, you know, techniques and, and, and storytelling. So that point when someone asked me what I do, it becomes a bit of a, of a, of a mush because I say like, well, I work at Kleber, I'm, I design websites for like things like the Pet Shop Boys and I work with other design agencies, but at the same time, I'm designing comic books, posters, I work for fashion labels, I do a bit of video for, um, for uh, like those screens in the middle was done for um, a, a diesel, uh, diesel fragrance campaign. Um, I do a bit of concept work for movies, uh, I do comic book logos, I start doing illustrations for Wired magazine, um, and this was quite a big project in 2007, I think, um, doing the full art direction and design for a graphic novel anthology based on the lyrics of uh, the music of Tori Amos. So I kind of like, you know, we did design the book, it was like a 500 page book, 12 by 12 inches, like record size, um, did the whole artwork, design, all the promotional, everything that had anything to do with the book um, uh, was, was designed by myself and uh, my wife. So at that point, I become like, oh yes, I'm the guy who does websites. And then other people that don't really know me, they say, like, oh, well, what do you mean you design websites? I thought you were just like the comic book guy. Or, you go, oh, it's all these different, um, like, you know, people, st I, I don't really have that, like, you know, oh yeah, this is Tom and he does this. Just doesn't work. There's like no logic to like how I present myself, and and it really becomes a fragmented, I, fragmented thing. On you know, I want to do all these different things, but I don't really know how to like put them under one under one roof. And I start to feel like it's a bit like a Jekyll and Hyde situation where I'm like, okay, in the daytime I do websites, but then I also do all this other stuff on the side, um, and that kind of goes on up until May 2010 when I. Uh, leave Kleber after eight years and I moved to another company called Studio Output who have, um, they started here in Nottingham, um, but I started at their UK, uh, their London office because uh, one of my last jobs when I was at Kleber was design their agency website. So in 2010 I started at Studio Output, but while I'm there I start to get this kind of nagging feeling of I like doing what I do in like, you know, working at digital agencies, doing digital campaigns. Uh, this was 
um, a Twitter aggregator thing that we did for uh, one year during Christmas where we kind of tracked sentiments um, during Christmas and then kind of collected them in these little uh, uh, d uh, dynamically generated infographics. But while I was doing that, I started to, to kind of get that nagging feeling that this is all fine, but I'm starting to enjoy this much more than just doing like campaign work and, and websites day to day. And I, I start doing more comic work. I start to develop uh, typefaces, which is now only 10 pounds. Um, I start to, you know, kind of the whole, the whole side kind of starts to, starts to flip. And what used to be like my main, my main activity become slowly starts to, to, to lose importance uh, in favor of, of working, for example, for, for Marvel Comics doing um, logos for their properties. So it's around that time in, in 2010, 2011, that I decide to kind of um, retire this and kind of go independent full time and set up my own my own design practice really um, because I thought it, it, it up to up to that point everything I did was kind of done on the side I didn't really have to worry that much about um, about the financials as financials of it if I didn't really make a lot of money on doing a comic book logo that was fine because I had my day job but now I really thought I, I, it, it, it was completely uh, out of balance so I kind of relaunched myself as Hello Miller Limited, pulled down my website, new website coming soon, still no new website. Um, it's coming, I promise. So in May 2011, I pulled down my site, I redesigned my logo, I go um, independent. It was like, so what am I now? Am I a graphic designer? Am I a digital designer? Do I call myself a creative director, agency director? And it's like, this is, this is kind of a, a, a mix, a collage of stuff I've been working on since, since going, since going uh, out on my own. And it's, it's like a very different mix of even more so than before in terms of the type of clients, the type of uh, industry, and the, the, the actual work I'm doing. Uh, one of the first things I did when I, was, uh, when I started my little agency was uh, work on the international campaign for Super 8. And I worked with, uh, with a, a small marketing agency and we developed this whole um, like virtual desk basically of like the lead character kind of sucking the audience into, into the actual movie, movie world. And that, to me it was really, it was a lot of fun and you could say like it's basically skeuomorphic design like maxed out because we we really went to town, well I really went to town, like you know designing fake magazine covers like all 70s kind of um, like uh, toy boxes, uh, video game tables, uh, fake newspapers and everything and we kind of worked, we worked really close with um, Bat Robot, the J.J. Uh, Abrams production company to kind of build this whole thing online. Um, but then at the same time I'm also working um, with, this was done with uh, INT Works who publish uh, It's Nice That magazine like their um, design uh, agency arm, uh, working on, on identities, for example, for, uh, for architecture firms. So it's, like, it's quite different from going from being able to do this and then going to this, very minimal, very like, clean, pure graphic design, to you know, working with other agencies and designing websites for like, really kind of disgustingly bling uh, phone brands. Um, but it's, it, it, to me, that's really interesting. That's what makes it fun because I can kind of, I have the opportunity now to kind of hop around and, and um, try different things. This, this was, um, I took on uh, this project because it was, I'd never done like that kind of stuff specifically before. And it, it, it was interesting to me. I thought like, I've never done this. What, you know, I don't, I don't really want to do this and this the whole time. Like I, maybe this is kind of a mix of, both. It's, it's, it has to be visually engaging, but it's quite clean and minimal. But then at the same time, because um, these, these kind of things are like the money jobs. That's where, you know, you work on this for like four or five months, you get paid well, 
and you move on. And you kind of, this, jobs like this basically buy me time to, you know, do some self-initiated things and, and kind of like segueing into like the whole um, alternative like movie poster scene and, and, and you know, do, do prints for like Terminator 2, um, you know, work with, with uh, Shortlist Magazine, for example, like do, do these things, do these posters. And it's like, these are just done for fun and in spare time, like even spare, spare time, if, if that even exists. But um, it's these silly things like that gravity poster was done uh, maybe in an hour, two hours tops. But then it went like viral and it popped up on all the movie websites, um, entertainment websites. It ended up on best of 2013 lists. And it's like I spent maybe an hour on it. But, you know, it's, it's these kind of fun things that people suddenly notice you from a completely different angle. And then I get emails from, you know, maybe something can come out of this. Like, you know, work wise, I can I can like, you know, a company might see this stuff and say, like, this is interesting. We want to talk to you. Or, um, you know, a uh, couple of, a year and a half ago, um, I was approached by uh, Michael Mueller, who's a, a really well-known photographer. He works pretty much full-time for Hollywood. All the blockbusters that you'd see, he's done the key photography for, for all the one sheets and, and the key art. So, um, through him, I got in touch with uh, Muse Productions, who worked with, um, who, who are kind of, owning, working with Harmony Korean. So I did these, um, I was kind of like, all of a sudden I was working like, you know, in Hollywood, um, doing like, you know, concepts for their one sheets and their key art. Uh, eventually they didn't really go with this, even though, you know, they liked the stuff, but I kind of, when I went in, they already had, that was, I think, um, three weeks before they went to Cannes Film Festival to basically go and sell their film to all the distributors. And they already had this like pretty much perfectly formed idea like this is what the campaign is gonna look like, make it. And I was like, well, I think it should look like this. And they were like, mm, it's nice, but no. So, well, it was, a, you know, again, it's a, it's a good experience and, you know, it's a good portfolio piece and whatnot. But, you know, it's 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 kind of, by accident, nice to 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 fall into these different industry sectors. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have thought of doing stuff like that maybe like you know five six years ago, and you know I still keep mixing it up. This is um, worked with the same agency that I did the Super Eight stuff with. We this was like a basically battleship but overlaid on the YouTube on the YouTube trailer. So this is again like something different, like doing a bit of UI design, like going quite tacky with like, you know, it's for a big blockbuster, so you can't go too clever with it. So it's, it's constantly like finding that, that visual balance. And, and I think as a designer, it's important to not, um, you know, be super hard line on, you know, this is how it's gonna look. And I, I only design, you know, with these fonts and I only do it like this. There is, there is a, there's a fine line between, you know, following your own voice and, and your insight, but also, catering to your audience. If you know that you're designing something for a movie like that, you know, you can kind of guess who your target audience is gonna be, so you don't have to come and present something that's like, you know, all flush left on a white background and like, you know, beautifully designed. Then going from this to, um, you know, I've been working with WGSN for the last two years, designing the, the basically the, the identity and, and the logo and the visual language for their uh, fashion awards. So again, this is going from this to this to this, completely different again. Um, this was done for the 2012 awards. Um, this was the, uh, the language um, for the awards that they held this year. So basically what I do with, with working with them, um, this was I'd say 90%, 95% uh, close to the stuff that I designed and delivered to them. Because these things happen, uh, sorry. Um, this was designed half a year, seven, eight months before the actual event. Because what they do is I come up, I present them with a visual language 
Then they go find sponsors and say like, this is how beautiful our event will look, give us money. Then they get the money and then they go internally, right, now we're gonna design all our assets. So with this event, they really, they, they basically, they barely touched my designs, they just implemented. Uh, they did like the little um, award that Rankin is holding there based on, on like the shards, uh, the shard kind of design that I did. This was done, uh, created for this year, and the award ceremony was going to be held at the VNA. So I had access to the VNA uh, image library, um, and then you know we kind of, I kind of went overboard in like you know I wanted to to you know old and new like that really kind of day glow poppy kind of playing a bit up to like you know the Peter Saville like old um, New Order um, um, designs. So it's kind of, it's, it's fun to be able to, to constantly like trying out new things and, and, and being lucky enough to have clients that can kind of go with it and, you know, go from kind of this look and feel to something completely different and kind of trying to find uh, like a thread that, that runs through it. Uh, another thing, like again, something completely different. Uh, I've been doing, you know, I've been doing these things which are, very far removed from like all the digital and the website stuff that I used to do to you know now I'm starting to do more app design and working with agencies developing brands and 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 design the whole UI and the usability for um, for iPhone apps uh, I've worked with uh, Flipboard magazine uh, a year ago I think um, working with them on translating print magazines into their platform. So they have this, this system that they call partners. And those are um, magazines that wholesale buy into the Flipboard platform. So you have Wired Magazine, uh, um, the LA Times newspaper, uh, Bloomberg, uh, Business Week, L Mag um, L France. Um, and so they mag th these magazines buy into the platform, but you have to, like, you know, it all has to be designed and fit. So this is, this is interesting in, in a way that I'm not really designing anything brand new, but I'm taking the language of, let's say, wired print magazine or even wired website. I take the constraints of Flipboard and then put two and two together and, and try to find this like third, um, this ter third um, avenue basically that you know, people immediately recognize wired as wired, but it's still within, uh, within Flipboard. Then going from that, um, again, something, something else. Uh, I did merchandise uh, design for um, a Finnish production company that um, they created that, um, what's it called now, I'm lost. Um, Iron Sky, that's it. Um, I worked with uh, those uh, people to produce basically uh, merchandise. That's the producer and two of the, the, the stars at, um, uh, South by Southwest when the movie premiered. So again, it's kind of all these different things that basically these last uh, these last three years really drive me, um, and I, I really enjoy being able to like you know do movie and, and and entertainment stuff. Really like the nerdy stuff that I grew up with wanting to do, but then I still have a need to to combine that and and do the stuff that I've basically. What I, I grew into as a design student and, and, and starting starting working, and I equally enjoy doing a one-off series of you know T-shirt designs for a film, as working with uh, technology startups and and designing uh, digital services, designing their branding, uh, designing their website, like the whole you know the visual like the, the vocabulary, how they brand, how they behave, how the website. This is. Um, by the way, it's a, it's a massive digital uh, asset management system. So this is uh, done for a company called Hogarth. The service is called Zonza. And Hogarth is part of uh, the WPP group. So, you know, it's part of a massive network of uh, ad agencies. And they use this service to basically ping back and forth TV ads, um, print ads, campaign work. And it gets basically, it all comes together in this hub, and then it gets sent to you know third parties, uh, TV stations, other agencies. So it's really an interesting challenge to come up with, um, you know, how would this thing work? How does 
you know, how does it look, how does it handle, create um, uh, design guidelines for, for basically for the website. Then roll that out, do, because this is the actual, this is the product, this is the actual digital management system that you log into when you're working with. To rolling, rolling this out and designing like the front of house, kind of the, the brochureware website, kind of, you know, taking that system, kind of simplifying it again and, and packaging it into like, you know, a really attractive service um, brochure that people might buy into. Um, then again, something else that I did uh, earlier this year, I worked with uh, Samsung on their sponsorship for the Princess Trust, um, which they sponsor every year. And uh, this year, the, the, key, um, the key campaign was that Samsung was going to go red as and, and, and take on the Princess Trust's brand color. So I worked with, uh, worked with Samsung to basically design the whole look. Uh, it was uh, tied into a, a Facebook app where people could basically add their photo. It would like turn red, it become a wall. We'd use that Facebook wall on all the outdoor campaigns so it was featured on uh, um, Piccadilly Circus in London, on the London Eye, was turned red. And I think throughout the country we had a load of um, outdoor screens that were basically on the day itself were advertising, um, you know, um, bringing awareness to like the whole campaign to the Princess Trust. So that's all fine and that's all, you know, that's all, that's all good and again, these are like the bigger jobs that you know um, I work with with other agencies on because I think these things for me as an individual designer um, sometimes clients won't really trust you that you think that they'll think you'll be able to to basically handle the volume of work so while doing these things it's I'm still doing, and even more so this year, uh, I've been doing more and more comic book stuff. And I'm really, it, it's almost like I'm, I'm circling back all the way to like my teenage years and like my early days in college when I'm like, I'm gonna do comics, I'm, do, I'm gonna do comics. But then I'm, um, I'm, I'm coming back into it from like from a designer's, uh, design perspective. So all the stuff I've been doing with like, you know, throughout the years with Ashley Wood, uh, doing stuff for, this is all stuff for uh, DC Comics. Um, basically designing logos, handing over logos to their art department and then they'll put them on a cover, add a nice gradient and drop shadow and outline and kind of ruin the design, but that's fine because you know going in that that's what it's going to end up on. But um, lately, like the last couple of months, um, the most visible thing I've been doing and, and it's, it's the thing that has been um, kind of the most gratifying and, and the thing that has been very visible, because I've been, been able to like kind of blog about it and, and, and share it as I go along. But at the same time, it's the, at, the, at this stage, the least financially rewarding because it's an independent comic book. So you're based on sales and sales are kind of slow in the beginning. And as you build an audience, sales kind of go up, hopefully. But um, this, has been, this has kind of been my, my, um, my work for the last few months. Uh, this is a, a new independent comic book called Zero, um, and I'm working really closely with, uh, with Alish Kot. Uh, he's a Czech, um, uh, he's from the Czech Republic. He's, he's the writer, um, he came up with the whole idea. Um, and the, the nice thing about this series is that every single issue is drawn by a different artist, and so I can basically reinvent the comic every single issue. So the first issue is, was released with four different covers. So it's the yellow and red one. They have issues two, three, four, and five. Um, and each, each issue is also set in a different location. So the first issue is set in the Gaza Strip. So I really uh, I, I researched like uh, drone cam footage and satellite imagery of the region and kind of distorted that whole thing and kind of wanted to make it look really comic booky and 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 kind of right as a, because it's a first issue as well um, so I'm, I'm kind of trying to inject something something different into what people would expect a comic book would look like um, and it it's it, it gives me like a platform to really like experiment with stuff and 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 play around and and not just work on the covers because I'm, I'm I'm 
qu actually quite involved in like how the whole thing looks because it's not just um, you know front cover then you have your comic book story and that's it um, there's loads of different pages and, and, and additional content that goes with it so I'm kind of designing this whole thing back to back um, laying out interior pages and and kind of like for each issue create this whole little uh, mini environment that goes from the minute you pick it up to the minute you lay down the book um, this is um, this is the design for the first collection it comes out um, in February and uh, for this this was kind of interesting because in in, uh, in the comic book industry what's what's usually done is you do a series or you do a couple of issues and then they get collected in a paperback but then as the cover they will usually use the first the, the cover of the first issue of that series or just that story and I thought that you know doing all this just using the top left image as the cover would be kind of a disservice to like what the whole series is about and how like you know the work that I've done and the work that you know the Alish and the, all the different artists have done because it's it's not like the series isn't easily summed up in just like this is the cover this is a series so I've been whoops, I've been working um, so this whole cover um, I kind of went all art school again and uh, basically printed out uh, tore everything up made a whole montage scanned it back in again then uh, the orange uh, band is actually printed on the cover uh, but I printed out the copy on um, orange day glow paper, um, then scanned that in again, so it kind of like muddles up and you don't get that uh, initial contrast. But um, I just wanted to play with all the different textures and it's about like the, the story is very layered, so it's kind of a very literal way of, of kind of selling that, to, selling that back to, to people. Um, this is actually the only thing I can really show um, of the book because I promised uh, Computer Arts Magazine kind of an exclusive on the whole thing. So I think the issue, Computer Arts, that comes out early February will have like um, a five page feature on like all the behind the scenes stuff and, and me tearing up comic books and, and working with rubber cement. But um, anyway, so that's kind of the, um, the, the thing that I've been working on now, and it kind of works like kind of organically that all these different things have, um, you know, I'm doing this now, and at the moment um, I'm working like through all these things, like people start taking notice of your work. Like it's really strange how, you know, you work in the design industry and you are, you, you kind of expose yourself to a, 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 a random segment of like everything that you can design for. Um, but then if you start like what I've seen with like, you know, the comic book work I do and like the movie work, uh, the posters and everything is it you, you tap into all of a sudden in a much larger audience. Uh, people who might not necessarily be interested in like, you know, digital asset management systems or like iPhone app uh, user interfaces. So um, through like all the zero work uh, that I've been doing for the last six, seven months, uh, now I'm working uh, on Noah, the graphic novel based on uh, the upcoming Darren Aronofsky film. So um, I'm working, this has been published uh, in Europe last year. And basically the script, the, the, the script of the graphic novel is, was basically the first pass for what eventually became the movie. So I'm working with um, Ari Handel and, Ar and Darren. Um, Ari is uh, Darren or Darren's co-writer. He also wrote uh, The Wrestler and Black Swan, I think. Um, so yeah, now I'm kind of like, you know, it, it's really strange, like incrementally, I'm kind of clawing closer and closer to like, you know, the cooler things that I want to do. So um, this is coming out in this book is being published in March, so um, they've taken all the like I think it's it, the 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 series. It's four books is b is concluding in March in Europe, and then for the American edition, which is kind of seen as the official like you know 
it's it's in English. It's it's how it was supposed to be published uh, in the first go. So that's coming out in March. So I'm working on this basically flat out at the moment. Um, so when you ask me now how I define myself as a designer, um, I I have. I have a problem calling myself a multidisciplinary designer um, because what I've what I've seen. I mean, when when in, in Tomato's case, I think it works perfectly and it encapsulates, um, you know, the the the, the work and, and 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 the ethos perfectly. But what I what I see now is I see a lot of agencies that call themselves multidisciplinary and when you see when you go when you look at their work yes you see okay they do books they do maybe uh, installation graphic installation design um, they do websites they do apps they do everything but there is like the design is all kind of the same you can immediately tell that a designer or a design agency has like a set style and that's I don't feel personally that I kind of fit into that kind of description because each and every project I do, I kind of have this urge to throw away stuff and, and start playing again. I think with the zero, the, 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 the zero uh, work is a, is a good example for, I think, personally, that I can kind of like, you know, this, book, this issue is uh, set in Belfast. Uh, it has, um, it, it talks about the IRA, so I'm going to design this this book as, you know, referencing old IRA posters, or we're set in, an issue is set in Shanghai, so I've spent like a weekend um, translating and finding the right characters to say zero issue number three in, uh, in Mandarin, and design it like really paired back in clean and bright colors. So I don't, I don't think that multidisciplinary kind of is, is, is uh, a, a nice, uh, like, a correct description of, of what I do. So when people ask what I do, I still say, well, I'm a graphic designer. But, you know, I kind of, this slide, I, I just this morning on the train, I took down the line that I had written there, because I had written there, uh, and it still says so on my side. I say, I design for everyone and everything. And I was thinking, I was thinking about it this morning, and when I, when I put this out first, a friend of mine said like, well, really, are you gonna design for tobacco companies? Are you gonna design for these people and these things? And I was like, well, no, that's not really what I wanted to say. What I wanted to say is that, you know, I'm, I don't really wanna shoehorn myself into a specific industry or a specific visual style per se, but I kind of keep evolving and keep playing around and keep, keep um, finding new things when, I, you know, when, a, when a project comes along. So I've, I took off the line and I've just left it open for now because what I design kind of depends on, you know, if it's, if it's personal work, how I feel, what I'm interested in at the moment. If it's client work, it's dictated by so many factors, who the, who, who the audience is, who the client is, what it needs to do. You know, you don't design an iPhone app the same way as you design uh, a movie poster or a comic book logo or an editorial illustration. It's all different. So it's, I think, being a graphic designer is a constantly evolving process. And, you know, I hope I, n I, I, hope I never get stuck in a rut maybe 5, 10, 20 years time and that I'm still doing basically what is relevant to that day. So that's it.